In this video, I'll be covering the calculation of excess returns for credit risky bonds. Now, bear in mind that excess returns is calculated assuming that the interest rate risk of the bond has been hedged. So the fund manager will only be managing the credit risk portion of the bond's return. So let's look at an example. So you're analyzing a corporate bond with a credit spread of 2.2% or 220 basis points and the spread duration is 4 years and assume that the bond has a 2% annualized expected probability of default and an expected loss severity of 60% in the event of a default. Now calculate the expected excess return if the bond is held for 3 months, this is the holding period and the credit spread is expected to increase to 2.3% from the current spread of 2.2%. So the formula for the excess return is approximately equal to the spread of the bond multiplied by the holding period minus the change in the spread of the bond multiplied by the spread duration of the bond and then we minus the expected loss for the holding period so we'll take the holding period t times the probability of default times the loss severity or the loss given default so based on this case the spread currently is 2.2% so we'll take 2.2% multiplied by the holding period of 3 months so t will be 3 over 12 in annualized terms so that's 0 0.25 so that's the expected return that you will get if you hold a bond for 3 months and then you don't uh, incur any default losses and there is no change in the spreads then this is what you will earn okay but however we expect the spreads to increase to 2.3% so which means that there we expect a increase of 10 basis points to the rate so we'll take 2.3% minus 2.2% this is the increase in spreads multiplied by the spread duration of 4 okay so this is the there'll be a loss here from the increase in spreads and then we'll minus the expected loss from defaults okay so that's uh, again 0 0.25 multiplied by the 2% default rate multiplied by the 60% loss severity so if you calculate this your expected gain from the spread during the three months is a 0 0.55 percent and then the expected loss from the increase in the spread is 0 0.4 percent and the expected loss from default losses will be 0 0.3 percent Right, so once we net off these amounts, we will get negative 0.15%. So in this case, from this bond, we'll expect an uh, excess return of uh, negative 0.15% if we were to hold it for 3 months and the changes in the spreads are based on this expectation. Now, of course, this tells us that the risk that we are facing from holding this bond will outweigh the benefits that we are getting from holding the bond. Now, let's look at another example. Now, for the same corporate bond, we assume this time that the bond does not experience default losses. We still hold the bond for three months and the credit spread is not expected to decrease to 2%. So if we were to use the same formula, let me just write the formula out. So... We have the spread duration minus the holding period times the PD and LGD. So this time around, the spread will still be 2.2% times the three months holding period. And then the spreads, okay, will go from 2.2% to 2% and then multiply by 4. And then this will be 0 since we do not experience any default losses. So this third component will be 0. So this would be 0.55% based on our previous example. So for the second component, this will be 0, negative 0 0.8%. So in this case, for a decrease in the spreads, we expect the excess return to increase. So this will then give us a total of 1.35%. So in this case, uh, they will, the excess return will be higher than just the spread itself. There will be an additional return from the decrease in spreads. Now, another example, let's say the moment you buy the bond, the instantaneous excess return if the credit spread decreases to 2.1%. So the moment you buy it, okay, and then the spread drops to 2.1%. So when you see the keyword instantaneous, it means that the holding period is zero 
it happens immediately. So for this case, uh, if the t is equal to zero, let me just repeat the formula. Minus t times pd and lgd. So the first term and the second term will be equals to zero since the holding period is zero. So that leaves us with only the second term. So this will just be negative and then we take the change in the spread which is 2.1% minus 2.2% then we multiply by 4. So since the spread decreased, so there will be a positive excess return here of 0.4%. So we can expect that positive excess return instantaneously from the change in the spreads.